and welcome. Ice Cream Man is an ongoing series from 2018, written by W. Maxwell Prince and illustrated by Martin Morazzo. This is a difficult series to summarize, mainly because it's a series of short stories with a thematic similarity. The easiest, most direct explanation would be to call these surreal existential horror stories. Within the series, there is also some narrative experimentation. Thankfully, it's kept to a minimal amount. If one had to make a comparison for the sake of clarity, Ice Cream Man is a cross between the David Lynch movie, Blue Velvet, and the surreal comic book series, Beautiful Stories for Ugly Children. For the most part, the settings are quiet suburbs within a contemporary setting, featuring characters experiencing some form of crisis, although there are a few stories that take place in the distant past and in the distant future. The horror experienced is usually existential in nature, and it manifests in an abstract manner. It definitely creates its own reality, with its own internal logic that's unique to the character or situation that's being explored. These vignettes may be part of an overall tapestry and an evolving mythology that has yet to be revealed. Or, quite possibly, they are not. At this point in the series, it's difficult to determine whether there's an overall narrative being told or whether the series is simply exploring thematically similar stories with a recurring character. Basically, it's a unique series that defies categorization. It's not simply one thing or another. It's a lot of similarly related things, all of which are quite interesting. Each issue is self-contained, and the only constant is the title character, the Ice Cream Man, also known as Ricardus. His role in the series is slightly ambiguous. He's clearly a figure of undeniably evil intentions, yet he seems somewhat passive. He's willing to be the catalyst that inspires a person to descend into their own personal anguish rather than directly causing a character's suffering. But from time to time, he does take a more active, hands-on role. Bits and pieces of the Ice Cream Man's past are given, but what they represent is difficult to tell. All one can presume is he's a constant presence, like a primal element of the universe itself. Apparently, there are rules he needs to follow, but what those rules are have never been made clear. It's heavily implied he disregards these guidelines, and this is possibly what brings him to the attention of his nemesis, Caleb the Cowboy. Caleb is as enigmatic as his cousin Ricardus. All we're told about him is he is a being of light, which only makes sense since he is the Ice Cream Man's adversary. Caleb seems to respect the aforementioned rules. He may even exist to enforce them. This cowboy may also be the voice of reason, while the Ice Cream Man is the voice of despair. Beyond this, there is very little known about these pivotal, recurring characters. Their inclusion gives the series a coherency that usually isn't present in anthology titles. It gives one the sense that these stories aren't entirely random, even though they likely are. The two issues, with an overtly experimental narrative, are issue number 6, Strange Neapolitan, and issue number 13, Palindromes. Palindromes is the least successful of the two. It's an issue with a story which can be read backwards and forwards, like the title suggests. The story itself is somewhat uninteresting, and does feel obviously engineered. It's competent, and it works as intended. But a technical achievement doesn't always translate into a compelling story. It seems more like a writer intentionally being clever, and that's always an uninteresting reading experience. Strange Neapolitan is far more satisfying. The entire story splits into three distinct storylines that are told concurrently. The contrast between the three stories is quite well done, and they're told with a bare minimum of text. As a narrative experiment, one that delivers three compelling stories, it's quite impressive. The artwork is also rather appropriate for the material. It's very clean, not overly rendered, and it evokes the art style used in books for young children. This enhances the sense that these stories are morality plays or fables for a mature audience. Quite simply, the text and the artwork are a perfect match and elevate the overall quality of the material. Choosing other standout stories is a matter of personal taste. And quite honestly, there really aren't any bad issues. The few that stand out are Issue number 3, Good Old Fashioned Vanilla. This is the story of a washed-up one-hit wonder who is called upon to write another hit song to save the world. It's filled with characters from hit songs, and it has a bittersweet conclusion. It's one of the odder entries in the series. This is due to it not being an obvious horror story. It's about the despair of achieving your full potential early and then sliding into irrelevancy. Issue number 8, Emergencies. This issue has a classic surprise ending that doesn't telegraph itself. At the same time, it's a good revealing piece about Ricardus and Caleb. 
Due to the nature of the story, it's best left unsummarized. Issue number 16, Tiny Lives. A loving father investigates his daughter's room and can't help himself from reading her diary. Again, this story has a shocking twist, and this leads to an appropriately nihilistic ending. It's also a very well put together character piece, and a good exploration of the father and daughter dynamic. The final issue that needs a special mention is issue number 9, Western Story. Western Story takes place in some distant time, on some distant world. All that's reasonably certain is that the universe is coming to a close. Presumably, it's the universe previous to the current one. This issue fleshes out the dynamic between Caleb and Ricardus, and it establishes the fact that there are rules to follow. However, the specifics are not mentioned. One can tentatively draw the conclusion that Caleb is something of a traditionalist, since his cowboy clothes don't change from era to era, or for that matter, from universe to universe. Conversely, Ricardus slightly disregards tradition, and he appears to alter his clothing style according to the times. In other words, both may be universal constants to some degree, but the ice cream man changes, and he adapts to the times and to the environment. Considering the ice cream man is a force of evil, that is quite an unsettling thought. It suggests that evil can be subtle and flexible. It can blend into any environment, and it may not be obvious at first glance. In the end, this series is rather engaging. It does require some active interpretation by the reader. This is due to the mysterious and impressionistic nature of the stories, which is the title's greatest strength. That's it for today. Like, share, subscribe, and comment, and I will talk at you later. Until next time.